Yeah, you know, my dad told me when I got into my 30s that life was going to change. You'd still be able to physically do pretty much everything you wanted to do, but you'd have your financial house more in order. You'd really be settled down in your life with your family. People would respect you more because you weren't in your 20s anymore. And some of that's true and some of that's not. But the one thing Peter Arnold didn't warn me about was the nose hair that comes along with it. My God, look at this crap. I mean, seriously, this is embarrassing. I freaking got nose hair growing on nose hair. Everybody's talking about today. Oh, happy Father's Day. No, fuck you, Dad, for giving me this nose hair gene. Jesus. At least I haven't gotten the ear hair yet, but apparently that comes in the 40s. Woohoo! Jesus, unbelievable. I could understand if I was like Don Tony or somebody. Then you would expect nose hair. You would believe there would be massive amounts of nose hair. But this guy, I'm not 36. It's like a freaking bush. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Anyways, are we ready to get the show on the road? What? Excuse me? We're live? Like right now? Like the people heard that? God damn it! We're professionals here! Every week, you do the same thing to me. Every week, you have one job. One job. And that is to tell the boss, the Schleg Daddy, when the camera is hot. One job. And you can't even get that right. I'm sorry, people. It's so hard to help find good help these days. Isn't it? Isn't it? Anyways, welcome everyone to another edition of the Off the Rope Show here on OTRS Central. Oh, baby, we got a good one for you. I'm sure this is going to get the flaming keyboard fingers of fire in full engage rage mode. So let's not waste any more time. When we talk about opinions, opinions are like assholes, let's admit it. Everybody's got one, and a lot of times they all stink. Not that Dean wash your ass Ambrose type of stink, but you get the idea. And you know, wrestling, like other forms of entertainment, it's all about personal preference. Some people like larger-than-life guys. Some people like the smaller, more athletic dudes. Some people like their in-ring action to be slower moving, but more physical, feel more big fight. Other people like the intense, high-impact type of spot fest that have become more prevalent throughout professional wrestling. And what we classify really as good professional wrestling can be incredibly subjective, let's face it. Not everything is going to appeal to everyone, and nor should it. You know, to me, the best type of wrestling is kind of a variety show. Even if you have a brand with a certain identity, you want to find some way to be able to appeal to everyone across many different demographics. The wrestling companies that can do that the best are going to ultimately be the most successful wrestling companies out there. It doesn't have to please everyone all of the time. Something needs to please everyone, at least some of the time. And when it comes to professional wrestling, you know, you can like a certain wrestler, that's fine. You can like a certain promotion, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, it'd be really odd to, frankly, not like anything or anyone in professional wrestling and still watch it. And contrary to popular opinion and belief, just because I'm not the most positive about it all the time, just because I tend to be very critical of it at times, does not mean that I don't like certain things about wrestling or certain people within wrestling. Let's put that to bed right now. But with that said, though, just because you like a wrestler and you like a brand doesn't mean that you always have to kiss their ass and always pump them up full of smoke and talk about how great they are all the time. Even the best wrestlers, the best promotions, they make mistakes. They screw up. Like Michael Jordan, he made some mistakes. He got massive gambling debts, then left a paper trail by writing checks to cover his gambling debts. That wasn't a good idea. His mistakes, of course, do not include playing baseball or playing for the Washington Wizards. You want to talk about the epitome of fake news, that's the origin of it right there. Hashtag alternative facts. Period. Unbelievable. You know, mistakes like uh, her telling you that she's on birth control, you don't pull out, and then you pay for it for the next 18 years of your life. And I assure you, fellas... You think it's funny. Ha ha ha. Joke's on me. But anyways, even the best can make some mistakes 
from time to time. And it's okay to own up to them. It's okay to admit they're there. It's okay to acknowledge them. It doesn't necessarily have to lessen the individual, lessen the wrestling promotion. It doesn't. But what I don't like is just like this blind idol worship and this true fanboy, sheepish kind of bullshit where everything this wrestler does is great, they'll never do anything bad. Everything this promotion does is great, they'll never do anything that's bad. Because to me, that automatically hurts your credibility because nobody is going to be perfect. They cannot be perfect 100% of the time. But with that said, when you look at what a lot of wrestling fans more and more are starting to say about Japanese wrestling is really bordering on idol tree. It's getting out of fucking hand. Idol tree, what does that mean? It's kind of that idol worship. The worshiping of idols or excessive devotion to or reverence for some person or thing. Think Beyonce fans. Think LeBron stands claiming that LeBron's the greatest of all time, even though there are so many factors that clearly indicate that Jordan's a step above. In wrestling terms, the CM Punk fans, the Daniel Bryan fans, you know, or you could sit there and say, going back in the day, Bret Hart. Go up to a Bret Hart fan and tell him Shawn Michaels is better and await the dissertation to come. The only thing worse than the Bret Hart marks was the mark Bret Hart himself. My God. But so many hardcore wrestling fans treat Japanese wrestling as the ultimate be-all, end-all. You know, just because it's good for Japan and just because it's not something that is here doesn't necessarily make it good for here or good, period. Kind of like British dental plans. Uh, they, they treat Japanese wrestling like it is the best, the gold standard. It's the one and only way to go. And, you know, to me, it just gets ridiculous. Like, look at how often somebody that's a New Japan fan or a Japanese wrestling fan actually criticizes something about Japanese wrestling. Go ahead, I'll wait. Now nah, we gotta wrap this shit up. You'll be looking for a long fucking time because it doesn't exist. Now, before you sit there and say, I'm just trying to be counterculture and just crap on other people for what they like, that's not the case. Eh, maybe, maybe part of the case, just to crap on them, just to fuck with them. But, th but that's the nature of the beast. That's the nature of who I am. But with that said, if anything else, throughout the history of doing this now, six and a half years, I hope that people gather from me that even if you don't like what I say, and sometimes you don't even respect what I say, you hate what I say, you hate me, at least you feel like you come here and you feel like I'm giving you the truth as I see it. You feel like you're getting the honest dope from me. You're going to get it unbiased as much as you possibly can, even though we're human, there's going to be some natural biases get in there. But, but the simple thing is, when it comes to this whole New Japan uh, kind of cycle and bubble of bullshit of awesome best of all time. If joining the crowd is um, not joining the crowd is wrong, then I don't want to be right. And that it's that simple. It's it, it just to me, I look at it and I see as this style of wrestling has infiltrated the United States and the types of performers that Japan features have continued to kind of trickle into the United States, not necessarily Japanese wrestlers themselves, but the guys that go over there from the independent scene and work in Japan and then come back. Is it any coincidence from a U.S. domestic standpoint that as we have gravitated more and more with U.S. wrestling aligning itself with Japanese wrestling, that the audiences have grown smaller? The business is making less money. I'm not saying, but I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. And if I have to be the voice of reason against this markdom bullshit, then I can take the heat, I can stand the heat, so fucking be it. I'll fight this battle, one hardcore New Japan cuck at a time. And speaking of hardcore New Japan cocks, ugh, I wish I had some elka seltzer because after this break, it's going to be time for me to take on the legend of wrestling journalism, Dave fucking Meltzer. Hello everyone, I'm Jeff Schlegel. You may know me as the Schleg Daddy here on the Off the Rope Show and on the OTRS Central channel. And for the past six and a half years, it's been my joy and pleasure to come into this wonderful, wacky world of the internet and share my thoughts and opinions about professional wrestling. And I hope you guys have enjoyed the experience as much as I have. And for those of you that have just recently found the channel or have been here for a long time, I thank you. And I look at where this channel has been, where this channel is, and where 
it needs to go, and I know this much, because I want more, more, more! I want this channel to get bigger, I want this channel to get better, because I feel at this moment in time in professional wrestling, it is important to have my voice, my message, be out there to a much larger audience. And that's where I reach out to you for some help. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to, again, treat this like some multi-level marketing bullshit. For those of you on Twitter, I want you to tweet and tell people about OTRS Central and tell them to subscribe. And then I want you to tell them to tell other people about OTRS Central and tell them to subscribe and so on and so forth down the line until we reach everybody in the freaking universe. We want to tell them the importance and the urgency of the matter at hand. Subscribe or die. That is the hashtag. That's what our motto is. That's what we live by as we try to hashtag make wrestling fun again. You see other channels out there with much larger audiences and you wonder how that happens. And then you look at this channel and you wonder why this one doesn't. Well, you guys can help. You can make a difference. Get on social media and do it. Go to these other channels in their videos and comment about how OTR Essential is the best professional wrestling-related YouTube show there is. The Schleg Daddy is boss because more often than not, the Schleg Daddy was right. It's up to you. 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 All of you. We can make this happen. And we can make a bigger, brighter, and better OTRS Central, and a bigger, brighter, and better YouTube wrestling community for one and all. It's up to you. Join the movement. Hashtag subscribe or die. Are we live? Thank you. We got it right for once. An award-winning YWC journalist, and this is the crap I got to put up with. And speaking of award-winning wrestling journalist, Dave Meltzer. We all know who he is. It's the number one name in wrestling journalism and has been for decades where my boy Bill Lapter, God love him, but it's true, was making up a bunch of fake stories for his wrestling magazines. Dave Meltzer was going out there and getting the insider gossip. He was getting the truth. He was spilling the secrets of what was going on behind the scenes in a way that nobody ever really truly had. He changed the way professional wrestling was covered. Ultimately, helped contribute to changing the professional wrestling business forever, good or bad. Um... And one of the things he did, I think, in a bad way, was he changed the way professional wrestling is watched. With the revealing of spoilers, it's really hard to be surprised. You know who's coming back. You know who's at the end of their contract, so on and so forth. The stuff that we really don't want to know, even though we do want to know, but we really don't want to know because even though we don't, we're going to be out of the loop. If we know it, it's going to ruin the enjoyment of the experience. You know, that's had a major impact, knowing the insider secrets of who's about to get buried, who's gotten on the bad side of Vince or Hunter or who, Cena or Orton or whoever the case might be, you know, across different companies, whatever. Um, talking about all these insider secrets and it's carried over into the wrestlers, it's carried over into the fans, and it's really changed the way people have watched matches over the years and enjoyed wrestling or viewed wrestling, and in particular his star rating system. You know, something created by Jim Cornette and one of his friends saying, hey, you get grades for movies, why can't you have them for matches? Jim Cornette, thank you, fuck you, bye. Don't ever give the wrestling business something like this again, this big steaming pile of turds. But the star rating system, I understand the need to want to quantify what you see and be able to measure matches against themselves in a historical context. But so many wrestling fans now are all about the match grading, the star rating, and so on and so forth. And I understand... It's very subjective. It's very much opinion-based. However, when we're talking about Meltzer, I think it's dangerous to pay much attention to his grading scale and to heed his grading scale because I've seen it over the years, even the six-plus years of me doing this on YouTube, the amount of people that start to more and more mirror what a Dave Meltzer says and what a Dave Meltzer thinks about what is or isn't quality professional wrestling. And for me, somebody like a Dave Meltzer, who in many ways, like it or not, is a gold standard of professional wrestling journalism, his grading scale should be better than that. He shouldn't be able to sit there and look at it and say, well, the only reason he gave this match this grade was because it had these people in it, or the only reason he gave the match this grade is because it had these people in it. But you clearly can see that, and you've been able to see that for years unless you're blinding yourself to it. And it's really seeped into the way, again, professional wrestling fans, the hardcore ones especially, the smarks and the internet marks and all that, 
how they view the product. And his bias, and in particular his Japanese wrestling bias, to me should call into serious question the legitimacy of his match grading. When you look at the history of Dave Meltzer and his star rating system, out of all the matches that he's given five stars or more to over the years, half of them came from Japanese wrestling companies. Whether that's All Japan, whether that's uh, Pro Wrestling Noah, whether that is New Japan, whatever Japanese company, half of them have been Japanese companies. If you didn't know me from a freaking stick in the mud, and I came on here and told you, that out of the top 100 matches of all time, of my three plus decades of watching the business, and for Dave, you're talking about four plus decades, 35 years or so, we're doing the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. And I told you 50 of them were WWE, or 50 of them were Crockett Promotion slash WCW, or 50 of them were ECW slash ROH. What would you think? You would think I was on some purely biased bullshit, as you should, and you would throw all types of labels at me like I'm a fanboy or a sheep or an ultimate blind mark for their crap. No matter what, I'm always going to artificially pump it up. And you would be absolutely right. So what is so fucking different about a Dave Meltzer doing it, if anything, it is worse because everybody knows who the hell he is. 25% of his five-star-plus matches that he's given out grades for over the past three-plus decades are from New Japan alone. Taking his grading as serious stuff or believing it to be true is like the dangers of believing everything you hear from an MSNBC or Fox News or believing everything you see on the Internet. Oh my God, this is what this person used to look like. Imagine what they look like now. Then you click through 30 things to find out, oh, they don't look any fucking different at all. And what's really weird about this and scary about this is people are buying into this bullshit and believing this shit more than they ever fucking have. Because of the Meltzer influence of who he is and the pedestal he's been placed upon and the years of credibility he's been able to real and artificially create for himself, People are starting to say, hey, if Dave Meltzer gave it this grade, then it's the real deal. Are you going to allow some biased bullshit to determine and dictate how you watch professional wrestling? Coming back to the Fox News or MSNBC thing. If Rachel Maddow was being expected to give you a fair grade of the Democrats, do you think she's going to? Fuck no. If you thought Sean Hannity was going to give you a fair grade of what's going on with Republicans, would you trust him to do so? Fuck no, and if you do, you're crazy too. That's what he is. He's like the New Japan wrestling version of a Rachel Maddow or a Sean Hannity. His bias is so clear and so much bullshit and so evident that you wonder just not if he's on New Japan's payroll, but how much he's on the payroll hook for. I mean, give me a fucking break. And what's really weird about this is this dude's been around all these years, so yes, we know him in this and that. This dude's almost, what, 58 years old. We're allowing an almost 60-year-old man to dictate what makes for a great professional wrestling match. Imagine letting your grandparents set society standards. Have you ever listened to your grandparents? Have you ever heard some of the crazy, borderline racist shit that they've said? The hateful shit that they've said? Are those the people that you want setting society standards? You see how that goes when you vote him into the presidency? On Congress, I'm just saying. Dave Meltzer is nothing more than wrestling's out-of-touch, nerdy grandpa, who is about 20 years past his relevancy in terms of wrestling opinions. His insights into the backstage dealings, and even that is always, oh, this is rumored to happen, and this guy's going to get a push unless plans change. And that's the ultimate hook. That's the ultimate trick. That's the ultimate get-out-of-jail-free card. So you can always be fucking wrong about something, but never really truly be wrong about anything because you've selectively chosen your wording like a high-powered attorney. And for that, I salute you. But just because Meltzer's been right about so many things over the years in terms of backstage dealings and uh, po backstage politics and all of this doesn't necessarily instantly translate into professional wrestling credibility. Again, Dave Meltzer and I have worked about the same number 
of wrestling matches over the years. I'm not even counting the backyard shit because then I'd probably have the edge on him. I'm just saying. Just because this guy gets all of this on one side of the spectrum in no way, shape, or form automatically carries over to the other side of the spectrum. Believe you me. It, it just doesn't. And, and I'm so astonished that so many people have taken what he said as such gospel. And, and what really astounds me about it is, okay, let's say you've got a match scale from zero to five stars. How can a match be better than five stars? And no, this is not some simple bullshit. This is not just about hyperbole. This is a guy legitimately saying that a match is better than perfect. How in the fuck is any wrestling match perfect? Because there are so many things that have to go into it for a match to be perfect, let alone to sit there and say that a match in 2017 was so good, not only was it great, not only was it perfect, it was better than perfect. It was six fucking stars. By legitimately trying to argue and not just saying six stars for hyperbole's sake because you enjoyed it and loved it so much, but really legitimately trying to argue for it just diminishes the whole credibility of the grading scale. If your grading scale is zero to five stars, then the best a match should score is five fucking stars. And no, you're not going to change my mind on this. This is just dumb shit. And furthermore, talking about Okada versus Omega One, how can a match with poor and inconsistent selling and overuse of finishers be better than fucking perfect? Give me a break. The same dude that wouldn't even give five stars to Undertaker Shawn Michaels at either WrestleMania 25 or 26 is now trying to tell me that Okada versus Omega One was a six-star match and arguably the greatest professional wrestling match of all time. And again, based off of his history that I've pointed out in terms of his clear and present Japanese and in particular New Japan bias, why would anybody in the bluest of blue fucks take this asshat seriously? And then to top it all off, now you get Okada and Omega 2 at that Dominion show recently, and yes, I've seen both of the matches, so I'm not just hating to hate, but Jesus fucking Christ, they might be okay matches for what we're looking at in today's landscape. But Dave Meltzer said the second match was even better, and he gave him 6.25 stars. This sounds like some shit that I would have some type of parody character just say. I'm fucking saying. Yet this asshole is sitting there and saying this shit. This is pure fanboy New Japan. I'm on the payroll shit if I've ever fucking heard it. And once again, how could anybody take it seriously? If your grading scale is from zero to five fucking stars, this guy is trying to tell you that he has seen... In his mind, the two absolute best, absolute tippy-top best professional wrestling matches in history of his four-plus decades of watching, his three-plus decades of grading, all here in 2017. Who's buying this bullshit? Would anybody take you seriously if they told you Raw was the greatest Raw ever? And then a month later said, now this is the greatest Raw ever. We would laugh them out of the fucking gym. Period. Or if somebody told you that Sami Zayn was deserving of world title runs. Same type of effect. So the two greatest matches of all time just literally happened here in 2017. And they just happened to happen with the same two guys in the same goddamn company that you have artificially pumped up and overrated for fucking years. This is bullshit biased at his best. And a Dave Meltzer... Somebody who has a name and has an impact on the business should be better than this. So, of course, sadly, he's not. What's the end game here? If you're not on New Japan's payroll, then what the fuck is it? Because Kenny Omega Day, he already said he doesn't have time for a wife or a boyfriend. And it's true. Look it up. Sucking his dick and kissing his ass like this isn't going to gain you a boy on the side. It's not going to gain you a husband that you must be have been searching for for fucking years. Stop with this bullshit. You're helping to ruin U.S. professional wrestling by pumping so many people full, so full of bullshit that everything that New Japan and Japanese wrestling does is fucking awesome. Well, ding dong, dumb dicks, it's fucking not. And to sit there and say that the two best professional wrestling matches that you have ever seen in your lifetime have both happened with the same two guys in the same year, and it's 2017? You're fucking insane. There's only one way to describe this fanboy. Mark. 
in the pocket of sheep bullshit with Dave Meltzer and this Okada Omega match series and New Japan professional wrestling. And I know what it is. Dave Meltzer, hashtag Omega Cuck. That's exactly what the fuck he is. He's a hashtag Omega Cuck for fucking Kenny Omega. And no matter how much you campaign for it, Dave, no matter how much you petition for it, Dave, no matter how much you beg for it, Dave, he's not going to give it to you. You're not his flavor. You're not. If you're on the payroll of New Japan, then you at least owe it to the people that have to pay to get behind your content wall to see your shit, or they just go to another dirt sheet that's ripped off the information from you, I'm just saying, then you at least owe it to your fans and your followers and your readers and your listeners to tell them that you are on the New Japan payroll. And if you are, then so be it. It explains so much about what you've said about so many things pertaining to Japanese wrestling over the years. And if you're not, then you are the true epitome of the height of the height of what we call a mark. Which is not surprising. On the one hand, you could be one of the greatest workers in professional wrestling of all time, getting paid all this money when you don't know shit other than the secrets that you've gotten other people to spill for you. And on the flip side, you are the biggest fucking raging hashtag Omega Cuck in the fucking world. Get a clue, get laid, get a life, Dave Meltzer. And stop dragging U.S. professional wrestling into the fucking toilet by negatively influencing all these people with your New Japan and Japanese wrestling bias bullshit. Let me right back to talk about Okada Omega 2 after this. Ladies and gentlemen, the dick stone here, baby. And the, the very simple question I got for you is what's it going to take for the Schleg Daddy to commit once and for a while to watch his Slammiversary? Sunday, July 2nd. I remember when he made a name for himself watching and reviewing Impact Wrestling. I remember when it was Destination Viewing, baby. And this channel ain't been the same since he foolishly, unnecessarily, borderline racially discriminated against Impact Wrestling, baby. So we got to get the movement going. Hashtag watch Impact Jeff. Hashtag watch Slammiversary. We need the Schleg Daddy to watch Slammiversary July 2nd. We need him to review Slammiversary July 2nd. And again, if all that don't get the job done, we need to tell him one more time to give us the biggest and most epic assumed gesture position there has ever been. Because you want it. I want it. And deep, deep down, we can make it happen, baby. Because we know the Schleg that it really truly wants it. So join with me. Help the dick storm, baby. Woo! Let's make a Slammiversary review happen, if you will, baby. Oh, Okada, Kenny Omega 2. How did I know we were going to end up here after this match happened? Now look, I understand the wrestling fans' love of the moment. And I understand the desire, in particular, if you live here in the U.S., to find good wrestling out there because it's really hard to find. Like Kevin Owens trying to look straight down and finding his cock. Just saying. And I understand in today's world of GIFs and tweets, internet porn, especially internet porn, most certainly GIFs and tweets about and of internet porn, that our short attention span society indicates that we tend to gravitate more towards the high impact, uh, quick payoff type of spot fest. You know, the days of really being slow and deliberate and working yourself to a crescendo, you know, that's just not the wrestling audience of today and what appeals to them and what speaks out to them. I get it. And I understand for some of you that you don't want to speak out against the crowd because, let's face it, when it comes to wrestling fan, fan being short for fanatic, we all know, and I've lived this life for sure, uh, believe me, I know, what it can be like to speak out against the crowd. And, and I understand that people may be very big fans of Okada, very, very big fans of Kenny Omega, and, and want to justify why they watch New Japan and stay up till all hours of the night to watch their special events, their pay-per-view shows, 
and why they're pumping it up full of smoke. But please, can we stop this hyperbole fanboy mark uh, cuck bullshit? <clears throat> and I'm sorry. It's exactly what it is. This giggly tits fanboy caught up in the moment bullshit makes everybody look like they're six years old. Just because a match has a bunch of spots doesn't make it great. It really doesn't. Because especially if you can tell several times that these spots look choreographed and they don't flow crisply and they aren't executed well, which you will see at times in Okada Omega's matches, um, then, then they're not great. And just because a match has Okada and Omega in it, that doesn't make it great either. It just doesn't. You know, everybody has bad matches, but if you pay attention to what New Japan fans say about Okada and Omega, you'll be hard-pressed to ever find them say anything remotely critical of anything either one of these guys do. And it's just ridiculous. You know, it's just like, because a girl has a big ass, and a big juicy ass, and some great motor titties, that doesn't mean that her pussy's not going to smell like straight tuna at times doesn't mean that she's not going to bleed, you know what I mean? I'm just saying, just because a meal has steak, potatoes, and vegetables, and it's a well-balanced meal, doesn't make it great, especially if the steak is great, but the potatoes are fucking terrible, and the vegetables taste like they came out of a paper bag. Just because the steak was awesome, does that mean that that meal was perfect or better than perfect? No, that makes absolutely no sense, because this is a multi-course meal, and more of the courses were crap or average or mediocre or just good than they were great or perfect, then how the hell can the overall meal be the best one you ever had? Furthermore, as somebody who has, again, actually watched both matches between Okada and Omega, what is it tangibly that you point to with the second Okada-Omega match that was so much better than the first one, where you agree that even though the first one was the greatest wrestling match of all fucking time, now it's this one, the second one, that is the greatest wrestling match of all fucking time. I even knew this shit was going to happen. It's literally, these guys could wrestle ten times, and every time somebody's going to sit there, and a lot of people are going to believe it and join in on it, talking about this is the greatest match of all time. What is it, other than the fact that it went an extra 15, 18 minutes longer? And what the fuck made the first Okada Omega match so great and the best match ever? I'm sorry, I just don't see it. It doesn't mean those matches were bad. Neither one of them was bad, and especially in the context of modern professional wrestling, they weren't bad at all. And you won't hear me say that Okada vs. Omega 1 or Okada vs. Omega 2 was a bad wrestling match. You will not hear those words come out of my mouth because they were not, especially, again, in the context of modern professional wrestling. But the best match of all time... Who comes up with this shit? Now the second match is even more so the best match of all time? Where does this shit stop? For all these people agreeing with the six star ratings and the six and a quarter star ratings, where do we go the next time with the third match? Because we know since the second one was a time limit draw, we know we're getting a third one. What's your grade going to be for the third match when it inevitably is going to be even better and that will now truly become the greatest professional wrestling match of all time that you've ever seen for the third time in 2017? You can't just say six and a half stars. You have to quantify it in a different way. What grade are you going to give it? The fucking Sun? Orion's Belt? The Big Dipper? The Milky Way? This match was so awesome, I'm going to give it a grade of universe. I'm going to give it a grade of infinity until the next time when we give it a grade of infinity plus one stars. It's okay to enjoy a match perfectly fine. And watching Okada and Omega, I will say that I ultimately did enjoy both of those matches. Yes, I did. But there's a big difference between enjoying those matches and sitting there and saying that these are the two best wrestling matches that I've ever fucking seen. And so many of you buy into this and feel validated when you hear somebody like a Dave Meltzer who has helped negatively influence the way you watch and view and qualify and quantify good professional wrestling over the years when he goes on his New Japan, I'm, in, I'm into their pockets bullshit bias of this match is six stars, this match is six and a quarter stars, now you feel validated and vindicated for feeling that way because he's helped to make you feel that way over the years. 
so he's created the environment of reinsurance for his biased bullshit. Please stop with everything in New Japan being the greatest wrestling ever. No wrestling promotion is perfect. No wrestler is perfect. But if you pay attention to New Japan bullshit, everybody pumps this shit up as the greatest thing all the fucking time. And the simple truth of the matter, it isn't. It doesn't mean it has to be bad. You want to know why I don't watch more New Japan? It's not even necessarily because it's Japanese wrestling. It's not even necessarily because it's not necessarily my flavor. It's because I don't want to be a part of a fucking wrestling community that is so geekishly, gayishly, fanboy, femdom, bullshit cucks about this crap like the New Japan fans are to an obsessive level about New Japan professional wrestling. And it's the popping up and propping up of these types of matches and this type of style as being the gold standard of wrestling around the world that to me has been a contributing factor into why professional wrestling has dwindled in terms of its interest, popularity, and overall fan base and money-making ability here in the United States. As the business has gotten smaller and more athletic and more physical and high impact and quicker, less satisfying payoffs, there has to be some connection to that and the dwindling of the U.S. wrestling audience. You cannot just blame a John Cena or Roman Reigns or a Vince McMahon. They are a part of the picture, yes. They are not the entirety of the problem, no. And if you think they are, stop listening to certain people and stop believing that bullshit because that is just not the case. That is hashtag alternative facts if we ever seen it. Again, I, being a fan is okay. And I applaud people for their passion. And sometimes I wish I could still feel this way about professional wrestling sometimes. I really do. But, but can we come to an agreement that before we start sitting there talking about this is the greatest match of all time, giving a match six or six and a quarter stars, we wait until we get away from the emotion of being caught up in the bullshit of the moment and we stop and think, get some distance from it to where we can more objectively grade it? Because I'm sorry. Just because a match was good or very good doesn't make it the best you've ever fucking seen. And if it does make it the best match you've ever fucking seen, then maybe I would suggest watching more professional wrestling and more historical professional wrestling. Maybe you'll get it, maybe you don't. I don't know. Stop being such silly fanboys, though, because it makes you easy targets. Stop being such cucks for this crap, because to me it really hurts your credibility. Because... You already did this once, then predictably, as I thought, you did it again. So that way we know the next time when we're going to Okada Omega 3, the same crap is going to happen, and we're going to give it a grade of Big Dipper, baby. Infinity Stars plus one. Ah, fuck that shit. I'll be right back after this. I'm not trying to sit there and restart World War II or start World War III by declaring war on everything that is Japanese professional wrestling. I'm not, because there are definitely some good elements and good parts to Japanese wrestling that I do enjoy. But what I do not enjoy, and what I do declare war on, is this New Japan Omega Cuck bullshit. Stop it. Stop being so goddamn annoying about it and stop overrating this shit and stop hurting your credibility and frankly insulting my intelligence because that's exactly what the hell you're doing. Stop listening to Dave Meltzer. If this here at this moment in time doesn't tell you, hey, for the wrestling insider gossip dirt sheet bullshit, it's pretty on point. He's good, even though, again, he's given himself certain crutches to be able to get out of it. He's, he's a lot of times on the money, whether people want to give him credit for it or not. But in no way, shape, or form should that translate into credibility about the actual match, the in-ring component of it, because this dude is fucking crazy. I don't know what the hell the deal is, but again, Dave, Kenny's not looking for a boyfriend right now. He's already said that, so get off it. And if New Japan is paying you like you act like they're paying you, 
then at least be honest enough and have enough integrity to disclose to your fans, your followers, your readers, your listeners, that that's indeed the case. Do we need to get a wrestling financial disclosure form? Just saying. And again, Okada Omega. What's so annoying about it is I already had to hear once this year about how these two had the best professional wrestling match of all time, which to me, again, was insulting my intelligence after I had actually watched the match. To turn around and then, of course, predictably, the second time around, these guys were even better and they had now the best wrestling match of all time. What the hell is the fucking standard going to be by the time these guys are done? You know, on the grading scale of zero to five stars, we're going to have ten stars, Big Dipper, Milky Way, Infinity Plus One, Universe grade on this shit. Give me a goddamn break. It's okay to enjoy your wrestling. You like New Japan? Great. You don't? That's great, too. But can we please stop pumping it so full of smoke and being so ridiculous about it and stop being such Mark fanboys for this bullshit? I, I just... That's all I ask for. That's all I ask for. Is that too much to ask for? I don't think so. But anyways, thank you to those of you that continue to follow OTRS Central. Um, it's not the wrestling show you want. It's the wrestling show you need. And for tuning in to another episode of the Off the Rope Show, where since 2010, we've been entertaining ourselves while you watch. Bye, everybody.